Hello, I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at the Louise Kimmy Sculpture Museum at Mount Irvin. This museum sits on half an acre of land overlooking the Mount Irvin Golf Course and the Caribbean Sea. There are three floors of gallery consisting of 30 life-size bronzes which were cast in Germany. There are also wooden sculptures as well as drawings. Louise Kimmy first came to Tobago from Germany in 1979 and she fell in love with this island and lived here for 34 years until her passing last year at the age of 74. Today her museum is managed by a fellow artist and Cuban friend Dunieski Laura. It remains open to the public but if you can't visit for whatever reason, stick around. We'll show you more of this place right after we tell you what's happening in our stories this week. A faster cargo ferry for Tobago, the MV Superfast Galicia begins sailing. We'll tell you how Tobagonian consumers stand to benefit. Buku and Bonaccord families get deeds to their properties. And a campaign to woo Canadians to this island. It starts with the island connoisseur. <laughs> This is Let's Talk Tobago. Welcome back to the Louise Kimmy Sculpture Museum at Mount Irvin. Louise was fond of animals, folklore, mysticism and African religions, which heavily influenced her work. It's why you see many depictions of man and animal in harmony. She was also passionate about dancing and ballet, so that too inevitably manifested in her sculptures. As an art student in Berlin, Louise said she felt restricted making abstract art using fiberglass. But she said Tobago allowed her to experiment. It gave her a space where she could be left alone to create the art she'd always dreamed of. But let's leave it there for now to tell you about the newest inter-island ferry in town. Well, more like on the waters. It's the MV Superfast Galicia with the ability to transport up to 112 passengers, 110 trailers and 60 cars. The vessel made its maiden journey from Port of Spain to Scarborough on July 7th. And for Tobagonians, that's a good start. They hope that the cost of doing business will be reduced and those benefits will be passed on to consumers. Davia Chambers explains. Those stories about cargo vessels coming into Tobago not being dependable will soon have no merit. All of the challenges Tobagonian business owners and customers face are expected to be a thing of the past. There's a new freight vessel, the MV Superfast Galicia. This replaces the warrior spirit and it's bigger and faster. Based on the information that he has given us, uh, the introduction of that vessel is going to uh, ease significantly uh, the challenges that we have faced over the years with respect to cargo, uh, with respect to the capacity, uh, with respect to the reliability and so on. And I think it would make a significant impact on the cost of living, the cost, hopefully the the cost of uh, various commodities in, in Tobago. The 11-year-old vessel will take twice the amount of cargo as the warrior spirit, and this includes construction material that some complained posed a challenge. Right now, the Trinidad Cement Company has to lease a separate vessel that comes, I believe, every fortnight to Tobago. Um, that is going to stop. That will be a thing of the past. The Galicia, on its regular daily service, will be able to bring... Um, all material, especially building material, which sometimes poses a problem, I understand, for Tobago. But this new vessel also brings about more certainty for the domestic tourism sector. And more so open up increased passenger flows between Trinidad and Tobago. Of course, you know that the domestic market is very crucial for us. And such a boat at this time, such a vessel at this time, will allow for more space on the passenger um, the vessels at this time. The MV Superfast Galicia has 24 cabins, a sick bay facility with two beds, and even secured prison facilities. The transit time from Port of Spain to Scarborough will now be five and a half hours, bettering the warrior spirit time by two hours. The boat has been acquired for a 12-month lease at the cost of $48 million. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. 
You may not be aware, but there's a lot more to acquiring a house than getting the keys to your property. There's a lengthy financial and legal process that homeowners must go through. Unfortunately, not everyone has the money to hire a lawyer and get the legal documents that prove ownership. In Tobago, this is more the norm than the exception, with some cases as old as four decades. But as Omadar Mills tells us, this is being rectified. Lot number 19 in Coral Gardens, Buku, was originally given to George Sobers in the late 1970s when he applied for this state house. But he's passed away, so now it goes to his son, Mervyn Findlay, who's been able to finally collect the deed for the home without having to worry about payments for getting the legal documents to the house. Mr. Findlay is glad for the opportunity to make renovations to the house after years of paying off for the property. Well, with the deed, I mean, if you need, you can mortgage it. You know, it still has some finishing touches to do on it and them kind of thing. So, you'll get out the deed and you could use it for that. You, know, you must feel a little proud, you know, that you could accomplish something. He started it, I finished it. Mr. Findlay's plans have been made possible by the Division of Settlements and Labor, which has been helping persons with state homes acquire their deeds and titles free of charge. More than this, the assistance is giving families the ability to pass on something of value to future generations. Some people don't own nothing and once you get somebody to die and need something, you feel very happy and proud about it. And you're supposed to be taking care of it because, you know, things are so expensive these days and it's hard for a person to buy land and to build a house. And if somebody pass on a house, you should feel very happy about it. In this batch, nine families were able to receive deeds to their property from the Buku and the Bonacord areas. Previously, eight persons in these areas received their legal documents. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Singapore, Malaysia, now Tobago. What do these places have in common? Dry spells. On June 24th, the Met Office issued a dry spell watch for both Trinidad and Tobago, noting that despite a bit of a let-up in some parts of the country, there's still an ongoing deficit in rainfall. They forecast that the situation will persist through August, which means the Water and Sewage Authority has had to cut back on water production. But here are some conservation tips that will help you. You turn on your tap and this happens. While it frustrates many, it isn't something that's being done deliberately. You see, even though we're in the rainy season, the country has been experiencing below normal rainfall. This means less water to fill our surface water sources, which accounts for about 55% of total water production on the island and has caused our water service provider, WASA, to make adjustments to Tobago's water schedule. For example, at the Colon Water Treatment Plant, which, supp which um, supplies the, uh, the majority of Southwest, we have had as much as 50% reduction in production and we have been feeling the effects, the customers have been feeling the effects, especially in the southwest. That means that Wasa also had to redistribute water across the island. Having had to do that, it would mean that people would normally have a, a better supply, a 24-7 supply, will now not have a 24-7 supply, you know, because Seeing that the surface water sources have been depleted, we are utilizing the groundwater sources to redistribute water throughout the island. If the dry spell alert continues after August, Mr. David says Wasa's water schedules will remain in effect. In the meantime, the public should follow these conservation tips. Reduce consumption, such as taking shorter showers. Um, outdoors, what you can do is, instead of using a hose, you can use a bucket. To wash your vehicles, you can wash your cars on the lawn with buckets to eliminate wastage. It's also advised that if you have to water plants, you water the plant at night rather than in the day. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but do stay with us for a look at the classrooms of the future. Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Sit Mariah at 660-0065 or Sit Speyside at 660-6096. Sit 24 hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Sit Pro, the new face of emergency management.
Your viewing Let's Talk to Bego. Thanks for staying with us here at the Louise Kimmy Sculpture Museum at Mount Irvin. Now, it's said that the journey of many trees ends in the forest, but once that tree was bought by Louise, this is the journey that it took. But Louise had one criteria. The trees she worked with had to be at least two meters high. Now, many of her sculptures have been exhibited in the Sister Isle, Germany, and Cuba, another place where she drew inspiration from. And speaking of inspiration, our tablets and apps appear to be that source for many of our young people. It's why the average adult is concerned about the use of technology by children. They have seen the negative effects of social media and smart devices, but that's just the downside. There are great benefits which include improving education. That's exactly what a pilot project targeting 20 schools across the country will prove. Two Tobagonian institutions are among the chosen ones. Kisan Braffitt has more. This is the traditional way of teaching in the classroom. But this is the classroom of the future. It's the Blink B-Mobile Samsung Smart Classroom. Basically what this program is all about, it, it takes advantage of multiple technologies to enhance learning with the classroom. Um, it comprises basically of 30 tablets, for the students, one for the teacher, and an uh, interactive whiteboard. Speyside High School and Bonacord Government Primary have been selected for this pilot project, which was launched by the Ministry of Education. In Tobago, the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport is partnering with the Ministry to create smart classrooms equipped with cutting-edge technology. The teachers at these schools will learn how to better manage their classrooms and increase student participation by screen monitoring. You find that at times, given whatever strategy the teacher might be utilizing in the classroom or what activities the children might be given, you will find that there are some students who will stay on task and there are others who might, you know, after a while their concentration span might lapse and they get off task. Apart from monitoring, it also tracks students' academic progress and enables teachers to provide private tutoring programs according to each student's needs. And that is something that is, is, is really, really needed in, in, in our classroom today. And as a solution, I think it's something that we embrace. It's hoped that the Samsung solution would also improve the performance of male students. Because of the gadget or because of the device that boys are really into active learning and participating and being engaged, I believe that the Samsung Smart Classroom would assist them with this initiative to assist them with learning. The traditional way of teaching tends to be one-dimensional, but the Samsung solution employs several strategies to engage learners. In the initial stages, the Blink B-Mobile Samsung Smart Classroom pilot project will focus on math and English. I'm Kisan Brathwaite for Let's Talk Tobago. We're staying with the education theme a while longer, this time to share a story which helps our students transition from one phase of life to another. Sometimes this can be awkward and challenging, especially when they don't know what to expect. And for those making the switch from primary to secondary school, it's even more difficult because it happens at a time when some are exploring who they really are. Here's a look at a program which helps them focus on building a successful future regardless of their circumstances. Try to be our leader, okay. so not our follower. That's what Shaquin is looking forward to when he goes to secondary school later on in the year. And he's even more encouraged to pursue his dream because he attended the Soaring in Spite of program entitled Making the Switch, an interactive motivational session designed to help Standard 5 pupils make an easier transition from primary to secondary school by providing them with valuable life lessons. Do our best, and when we teach her, teach doing something on the board, to obey and listen. So when she is test time and you're going under the test, she will be able to get the answers and correct. Angel says the session has her looking forward to secondary school life as an environment where she can be a success. I look forward to do my work well and don't follow no bad company. The inspirational speaker, Don Lafoucade, wants to be part of the solution in nurturing our nation's youths. 
in teaching them to become good contributing citizens. He says that children have to learn to be confident of their worth and abilities. The main thing is that they need to value themselves. When they value themselves, they'll better be able to value their peers. And when they value their peers, together with their peers, they can discover and live a purpose. So it's valuing self, valuing their peers, and discovering and living one purpose. The Soaring in Spite of Primary Schools program is sponsored by Republic Bank. In Tobago, 900 pupils benefited from the two-day sessions, which have been facilitated and supported by the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport. I'm Umadar Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. You may not know the name, but you definitely know the product. It's the incandescent light bulb, widely used in homes across both Tobago and Trinidad. They've been around since 1879 when they were invented by Thomas Edison. They're cheap, but these bulbs aren't ideal for our environment. Actually, of all the energy consumed by these light bulbs, only about 10% of it is converted into light. The rest is released as heat. That's why many households are switching to what's commonly called curly bulbs or energy efficient bulbs. And some of this is possible through a program known as the Light Bulb Exchange. Argyle first benefited, but now it's another community's turn. They're from the village of Patience Hill and they're the second set of residents to participate in the Light Bulb Exchange initiative in Tobago. A collaboration between the Ministry of Energy and Energy Affairs and the Tobago House of Assembly to reduce the number of households using light bulbs which are inefficient, very hot and have a relatively short life. So they gave up those for two energy efficient compact fluorescent light bulbs or CFLs. We have been accustomed to use the old time incandescent bulbs. These bulbs really utilizes or gives off more heat than light and they are very inefficient so that 90% of the energy is used in giving off heat whereas the new CFL bulbs are more efficient in that over 90% of the energy is used for light. Besides, they use the last longer. CFLs actually use 80 times less energy. In fact, for every 100 units of energy, the incandescent or round bulb draws, only 10% is used for lighting. The other 90% is wasted. Reducing their usage therefore equals reducing this island's carbon footprint and puts Tobago and Trinidad on par with the rest of the world that's going green. This particular initiative is one which is geared towards um, introducing um, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago to the whole concept of small initiatives and small steps that you can take in their daily lives to increase the level of efficiency, the efficient use of energy, which will result in saving energy. And this is just the beginning. 25 households in Patience Hill will have all their light bulbs changed to energy efficient ones and all at no cost. A plan that falls right in with the THA's mandate to keep the island clean and green. Solar lights have already been installed at the Cove Eco Industrial Park. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking another break, but coming up, we'll meet the island connoisseur who'll be selling Tobago to Canada. Thanks for staying with us. You're viewing Let's Talk to Bagel, and we're here at the Louise Kimmy Sculpture Museum. There's a lot to see and learn here, not only about art, but also religion, traditions, and culture. As you walk around this museum, you begin to see the Cuban and African influences in her sculptures and drawings. For instance, this sculpture is Louise's interpretation of what we call a sukiya. She also depicts Orisha deities, all samples of her work which are greatly appreciated in Tobago, given the island's history. Now, Tobago also has a long history with cricket, and this island is determined to take its involvement to another level. It's why a three-year agreement was signed with the West Indies Cricket Board to host the regional under-17 tournament here in Tobago. Davia Chambers reports. 
While the world is tuned into football, cricket action is still continuing around the region and the world, including Tobago. It's that time again when Tobago hosts the Tobago House of Assembly's regional under-17 cricket tournament. Last year, Team Trinidad and Tobago walked away as champions. This year, they'll compete again against five other teams, Barbados, Guyana, Leeward Islands, Windward Islands and Jamaica. You know, we are the defending champions, so I think that we should be doing well again this year. So we have a combined Trinidad and Tobago team. One of the top youngsters in Tobago, Dijon Charles, who was also in the team last year, is going to be one of the major players this year again in the tournament, someone whom we hope will be um, playing a critical role in the success of our defence. The format of the tournament is the same. All six teams would be playing against each other, so each team basically has five, five matches to play. Right? And at the end of that, you know, it's what we call a wrong robin format. We will know who ends up on top because points will be awarded for each victory. So on every given day, we're going to have uh, three matches being played. This is the third time Tobago is hosting the tournament. Last year, after putting its stamp on the competition, changing the name from the WICB's Under-17 Regional Cricket Tournament to the Tobago House of Assembly's Regional Under-17 wow. Cricket Tournament, the THA went a step further, offering the West Indies Cricket oh, Board to host the competition until 2015. That offer is in keeping with Tobago's goal to develop sport tourism on the island. But for today, Mr. Ragunath has only one hope. Last year we were blessed with excellent weather. And I, I, I was praying when I came here this morning that the Lord blesses us with excellent weather again. The tournament ends on July 15th. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago is a relatively small Caribbean island which attracts thousands of visitors each year but most of the tourists who come here are from European countries. There's a need to expand that market, to tap into other countries whose citizens are doing more traveling and who are spending more overseas. The private and public sectors are working together to do just that. They're looking to North America, and for this, they're using word of mouth, but with a technological and social media savvy twist. This is Nadine. She is a travel videographer. She loves adventure. She loves the water. This is a snippet of the winning video sent in by Canadian blogger and a travel writer Nadine Skykora for the 2014 Island Connoisseur or 60 Days in Paradise competition, a marketing campaign which seeks to encourage Canadians to come to Tobago. Nadine will be paid to spend two months on the island experiencing its historic sites, cuisine, cultural events, fun activities and visitors' accommodation. But it's not all fun. She'll have work to do. The benefit is that everything she does, her job is then to talk about it in social media on her own blog page and really get that information out there. And then we as the association will take all that and put it on all of our pages. So our websites, our social media, Facebook, our blog, um, Twitter campaigns, everything, and just get it out there so that Tobago is getting that awareness in the Canadian market. And if this works and more Canadians start booking a trip to Tobago, it's hoped that the next thing to follow will be direct flights between Canada and this island. If we can get an airline here, because we already have Canadians coming, but if we can make the, it an easier trip, direct, say Toronto, Tobago, then Tobago will benefit. The campaign is one which members of the Tobago Hotel and Tourism Association are supporting. The initiative has been sponsored by the Division of Tourism and Transportation in collaboration with the Tobago Hotel and Tourism Association. I'm Omidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. They got started in 2010 and it's the only one of its kind on the island. This organization offers therapeutic sessions to differently abled children, but they aren't the only ones who benefit. Let's learn a bit more about healing with horses. Meet 14-year-old Faith Fafan. She has cerebral palsy and feels the need to be involved in therapeutic sessions with horses since it helps her to lead a positive life. People with cerebral palsy have difficulty with movement, muscle tone and motor skills, that is, the ability to move in a coordinated and purposeful way. But the rhythmic motion, shape and warmth of horses motivate and can be helpful to people with cerebral palsy. While sitting, uh, sitting on the horse, riding a horse, it helps his trunk to loosen up. 
She says the horses also help to facilitate cognitive and sensor motor development in childhood, a sense of responsibility, self-confidence in adolescence, all while stimulating good posture, balance and flexibility in all children. We feel the need to create a space, um, uh, a space, an integrated space for special needs people, for differently able children where they are embraced and empowered through different therapeutic interactions to find, you know, their passion, to find what they love to do in life. And Faith, along with other kids, are all satisfied with the benefits they gain. Being free, enjoying riding a horse, and cooperating to, to the other horses. And um... After a long day of school, I come to the horses and I feel calm again. Sometimes I come either two times a week or once. I like being with the horses, I like grooming, and I like riding. Healing with Horses is supported by the Tobago House of Assembly. The land on which they graze and ride the horses was donated by the Assembly, and just last month, the Foundation was among 14 groups and individuals to receive financial assistance from the Assembly. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, our viewers. Tobago's top SCA student, Javon Bruce, scored just over 240 marks, which is about five points behind the girl who topped the country. The scores of the top 10 Tobagonian students were just as encouraging, about 10 points behind the national score. Overall, the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport reported that the island saw an improvement in the number of schools performing above the national average. So today we're asking, what can be done to ensure Tobago continues to improve at the SEA exams? This is what you said. Keep giving the youth motivation, you know, help them so they could understand more better and give them more encouragement so they could perform more in the school work. Teachers, you know, make sure that they properly qualify to deal with students because, you know, not all students are, the, are easy to teach. I like my prayers. I like my family and counsel and guidance and stuff, you know, parenting and things. Well, I think the, the parents now play a great part in that even while they're on vacation now, that you know, let's toss the um, school books, um, the bags aside, but they you take them up in their school work and the teachers will, will do the rest after they get back in school. To give the parents and the children the education so they understand what does the child need, what do I, the parent, do to ensure that my child's brain an entire body is functioning at its optimal best. So when they go to school, they can absorb what the teacher is saying to them. I think um, Tobagonians could ensure that uh, Standard 5 students, they get more lessons. Um, they have extra um, curricular activities as well. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Remember, you can send us your comments or queries on anything you've seen in this program to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Colleen Holder, and on behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. And as we go, we leave you now with a final look at the Louise Kimmy Museum at Mount Irving. <laughs>